I'm sure others have that same testimony that they would surely have been lost had God not have called them out. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like you to turn with me to Daniel chapter number 10. Daniel chapter number 10 and verse number 1. Say, man, if you got it, oh me if you don't. Oh me. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Drop down to verse number 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, three weeks. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. I remain there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Amen. I'd like to preach to you tonight from this uh, thought until the breakthrough comes. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Jesus, God, for your goodness today. Lord, I feel your presence tonight. And God Almighty, I pray, Lord, for you to speak. Let your word go forth and find fertile ground that it may grow. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Amen. Joshua chapter number 6 and verse 1 it says, Now Jericho was straight, went straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, go round about the city once. Uh, thus shalt thou do uh, six days, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a loud blast with the ram's horn, uh, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Amen. Praise God. As we enter into the spiritual realm that God has promised us, we must be prepared for confrontation. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Can I tell you tonight that there is no progress without resistance? Amen. Think about your tire. If there's no resistance against the ground, you're not going anywhere. Your tires are simply spinning. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's no progress without resistance. Jericho was a fortress city. It was a symbol of, of the enemy's strength and power. It was made up of men and women wholly given to idol worship. And this city stood directly opposed to Israel's inheritance. 
Amen. God promised Israel the land of Canaan. Amen. And, and, and this was the very first city that they came to uh, as they crossed Jordan. Amen. This city had great walls that spoke of great strength. Uh, it had a reputation for being indestructible. Uh, amen. And in the passage just prior to chapter 6 of Joshua, <coughs> you see that they had just begun to taste uh, uh, the goodness of their inheritance. In Joshua 5 uh, and 11, it says, And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn uh, in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Uh, neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Amen. They began to taste, uh, amen, to taste and see, uh, amen, of the blessings of God in their life and what God had in store from, for them. Uh, amen. But in the middle of their sampling of the land, uh, uh, Jericho stood in their way. Jericho was right in front of them. You had to go through Jericho uh, uh, to receive your promise. You have to, amen, how, how many of you today uh, are facing uh, problems in your life that, that seems like uh, the walls of Jericho, indestructible, uh, amen, you can't get through them, you don't know how you're going to get around them, uh, amen, come on somebody, uh, amen, I don't know what you, what you have been facing in your life tonight, uh, amen, but I feel in the Holy Ghost uh, that God is wanting me to let you know uh, that He wants you to break through, uh, He wants there to be some victory in your life uh, you do not you don't have to live uh, a man just sampling uh, the goods just on the outskirts of Canaan uh, but he wants you to be able to uh, taste uh, of the land flowing with milk and honey amen he, he wants to give you victory tonight amen Joshua provides us some insight in to breaking through some seemingly impossible obstacles that stand in our way. Uh, in Joshua 6 and 1 it says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. You see, some, some of you may be satisfied right there. You don't bother me and I won't bother you. <laughs> you, you ever, have you ever known anybody like that? I, I don't care what you do, just don't bother me. And I won't bother you. Some churches are satisfied right there. Uh, amen. We haven't gained any, but hey, we haven't lost any. You see, God is never satisfied with containment. He's never told His church to just contain. You see, to suppress lust, to suppress the enemy is never victory. To suppress lust in your life is not victory. To suppress anger in your life is not victory. To suppress resentment and criticism is not a breakthrough. Uh, to suppress uh, uh, it means to hold it inside. Uh, and, and whenever you are holding it inside, this is not victory. This is not a breakthrough. Amen. Victory is when the cross has destroyed uh, the thing that has been holding you back from the root. Amen. From its root. Amen. Where the cross comes in uh, and, you, uh, and you submit your life to God. Uh, amen. To where the cross comes in uh, and it completely destroys that thing that has been holding you back. Amen. God has never called us to suppress sin. He's never called us to suppress, uh, amen, things that, that are not right in our life. He, he has called us to deal with them. Amen. If you're going to have victory, if you're going to have a breakthrough in your life, you've got to have dealt with the problems and the sin, uh, amen, that has been holding you back. Amen. Paul said, lay aside every weight in the sin that doth so easily beset you and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want victory in my life. I want to break through, you know, and, you know, coming into this new year, the, you know, a lot of people, they say, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have all these resolutions. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be slim and trim. Amen. By the, by the end of the year, 
you know, or, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to uh, draw closer to the Lord. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. And they set all these goals. Uh, amen. But, but in all actuality, uh, you can ask yourself, how many of them are ever actually accomplished? Amen. It's one thing to just set goals, uh, and it's another thing to complete them. You will never receive results from your goals unless you complete them. If all you say is, and, and I've known some people like this, they've, they've said, I've said it before too, you know, if I had a million dollars, you know, I'd do this. I'd do, my grandpa, he is one of, he's one of those. He, he plays the lottery, <laughs> and uh, he thinks he's going to win. So he plays the lottery, and he prays, and, and he's already told me, he said, he said, Bubba's going to get a million dollars. You're going to get 150000 And he said, and I'm going to build a big new cathedral right next door. He's, he was raised Catholic, so you gotta, you got to understand where his thoughts are coming from. He said, I'm going to build a big cathedral right over here, and it's going to have a seat that's on a conveyor belt that you don't even have to walk up the stairs, but it's going to have these high stairs leading up into the church, and you just sit on the seat, and it will just carry you up to the top. Uh, oh, he's, oh, he's planned out our new church. Uh, <laughs> he's got it all planned out, but, but it all hinges on him winning that, that multi-million dollar lotto. Amen. But you hear a lot of people say, oh, if I had a million dollars, I'd do this, I'd do that. I, you know, if I, if I had some money, I'd just do this. And, 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 but yet they stay home all day long playing video games. <laughs> they don't get out and work. Amen. I was, I was telling our youth class this morning, we were, um, I, was, I was talking to them, uh, and my lesson was on uh, uh, how God can take impossible things and make them impossible and you know, and how how God can change situations, and even though it seems impossible, you know, He can make He can make a way out of no way. He could He could do something in your life that where you don't even know how it happened. Amen, amen. The Apostle Paul wrote, he said that there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, and he will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. See, a lot of people, they cut off that last part. They say, I don't need that. You know, he's, he told me he's going to make a way of escape out of my problem, out of my trial, out of my trouble in my life. Amen. And he says, well, well actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a way of escape so that you can bear it. <laughs> I'm going to be with you, but, but, but you got to go through it because there's some, there's some excellent life lessons uh, that are being learned in the process. If, if God just reached down in the midst of your trouble and just pulled you out and said, oh, I, I'm going to baby you, I'm going to just... I heard this, and maybe this is why I'm so healthy, but I heard this that those... Those kids that never ate dirt got sick. <laughs> hey, that's what I, you know. You know, I, I've tasted my fair share of dirt growing up, whether voluntary or involuntary, whether it's falling out of a tree or something or or something. You, you know, I, I've had my fair share of dirt tasting. Uh, Hey, but, you know, and, and people said, oh, that's so disgusting, that's so nasty, uh, hey, you know, for these little kids to be running around, we used to run around, we had dirt drooling from our mouths and stuff, <laughs> we were just little kids, if, if you had seen our old house uh, that, that we had right up over, Brian remembers this, we were talking about it today, um, but right where this car lot is, a couple blocks away, uh, we used to own that entire lot, it was like over an acre, I believe, and um, but out underneath this big oak tree that we have that's still there, um, it, grass didn't grow there. It was just dirt. And, man, I've made many a racetrack in that dirt. I remember one time my dad and I, we set up, my, set up all my little G.I. Joes and my cowboys and Indians in the dirt, my little plastic ones, and I had a Daisy BB gun and I had a little pistol BB gun. And we were on opposite teams, and we were having to try to shoot the little, <laughs> the little guys on the other side. You know, you had a lot of fun in the dirt. 
and uh, and I you know I like to attribute that to my healthy standing, you know, <laughs> you know, eating plenty of dirt and just you know just uh, builds my 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 uh, you know builds my immune system to where I can handle other things, right? You know, all these people living in a bubble, <laughs> you know, they get out here, they you know they're sick all the time and. Just, just don't can't seem to oh can't seem to get well for any length of time, amen, amen. But but you know what? It's sometimes that whenever it's in the dirt that kind of builds our immune system, and sometimes it's in our trouble and our problems that we face uh, in this life that God uses it, to, amen, to to carry you and to mold you uh, and to make you into something into what He has for you to do. Amen. God's got a plan for your life. Amen. I said God's got a plan for your life. I don't know, uh, amen, where you are at spiritually. Uh, amen. Some I, I know more than others. Uh, amen. But God has got a plan for your life. Each and every one of you. Uh, amen. From, from Sister Cooper all the way down to Josie. Uh, God has got a plan for your life. Uh, amen. Uh, as long as you've got breath in your lungs, there's a plan. Uh, as long as there's breath in your lungs. Uh, amen. As long as your body hasn't been changed. Uh, to immortality, uh, then you've got a you've got a purpose and a plan from God. <coughs> but a lot of people they say, "Lord, get me out of this problem." What if what if the children of Israel had said they looked at Jericho and they said, "Oh God, oh that they say that plenty of times, facing problems." He said, "Oh, I just want to go back to Egypt." I remember all that slave labor that we had there, having to cut our own straw to make bricks and, and just working for the Egyptians. But I'd rather have that than face this, oh, this terrible circumstance in front of me. You ever known someone like that? They'd rather go back to what God had delivered them from, amen, than to just wait on God to bring them through their problem. Amen. God's, God's got a breakthrough coming your way. If you'll be faithful to God, you'll live for God, amen, you'll stay faithful, you'll stay obedient to God, amen, God will bring you through. But Joshua and the people of Israel, they come up to Jericho, and I heard one time that they had chariot races on top of that wall, on top of the wall of Jericho, that it was so thick, and that, and that, and that they thought that they were impenetrable, that nobody could reach them, nobody could get them, all they had to do was shut the gates uh, and they were safe. And then they see, amen, then they see these, these nutty little Israelites walking around their wall. Amen. I'm, I'm sure it's quite a spectacle. Amen. Over a million, or a million plus, amen, Hebrews just walking around their wall. Amen. Come on. God's got a plan. God's got a plan. We don't understand. You say, God, why in the world am I walking? You ever done that? You say, God, why in the world are, why are, this doesn't make sense, God. You know, sometimes we try to reason with God with common sense. <laughs> and you just can't do it. Because his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are high, greater than our thoughts. We, we don't understand. We don't see the big picture a lot of the times. Amen. And God's saying, I've got a big plan for you. Amen. God, I don't understand why I got to do this. I don't know. Naaman didn't understand. He said, I can, go to, I can go back to the rivers in Damascus and they're clean. I can go dip there and, and I would come up where my clothes wouldn't be stained with the mud of Jordan. But he would have came up a leper. Amen. It's only whenever you obey the word of God, obey the voice of God. Amen. When you obey the voice of God in your life, Amen. And you allow God to direct you and to guide you and you respond to him. Amen. Then you find a way. Naaman didn't understand why he had to go dip seven times in the muddy Jordan. Uh, but when he went in obedience, uh, the seventh time he came up clean like a baby. Uh, amen. He came up. Uh, all the leprosy was gone. Uh, there was no trace of leprosy. Uh, amen. His, his skin was soft. Uh, amen. And he was, uh, he was a new man. Amen. 
So you say, I don't understand how God is working in my life. I don't understand uh, why I'm having to go through what I'm going through. Uh, amen. But I've come to tell you tonight uh, that God has got a plan for your life. Uh, hang on to the Lord. Uh, amen. He's got a breakthrough. He wants to help you uh, to get victory in your life. Amen. Joshua 5, 2 through 3, it says, at that time, this is the chapter right before, amen, God gives him instruction on how to defeat Jericho. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made them sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. Amen. He circumcised again the children of Israel. You know, if you really truly want a breakthrough, then you have got to sanctify yourself. Uh, amen. You've got to take the word uh, and you've got to cut yourself loose from anything uh, uh, that is fleshly related. Any, any bit of carnality, you've got to uh, cut it off. Uh, you can't suppress the flesh uh, and get deliverance from the flesh. Amen. Some people say, well, I'll take medication for that. <laughs> oh, you're, you're just suppressing the problem. Yeah. Amen. You're not dealing with the problem. You need to get rid of it. Right. Amen. You need to cut it out of your life. Right. Amen. Joshua 5.13 says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld that the, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship uh, and said unto him, uh, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Uh, the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe uh, from off thy foot, uh, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua what did so. Amen. You say, John, what are you preaching tonight? Amen. I, I feel like Joshua gives us some steps uh, that we can take to have a breakthrough in your life. Amen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God, uh, that, that God has put some uh, steps that we can look at what Joshua did, uh, how Joshua responded? Uh, amen. You know, Joshua is, is a type of Christ, a deliverer, Amen. Someone, someone who brought you over Jordan. Amen. Someone who brought you into that promised land just as Jesus is bringing his people home. Amen. Amen. We cross over Jordan in baptism in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Amen. Then he gives us victory by his power. Amen. And, and so we can learn from Joshua here. In Joshua 5, we see where Joshua was over by Jericho and he lifted up his eyes and looked and he looked beyond the walls he looked to the hills from whence cometh his help amen he saw a man over against him with the sword drawn and he cried art thou for us or for our adversaries and the man replied nay as captain of the lord's host i'm come you see when you align yourself with god this is this is what joshua did he aligned himself with god you know, he, he didn't charge at the man <coughs> and say, you know, I, are, you really, are you really captain of the Lord's host? I'm here, I'm going to fight you. You know, he didn't wrestle with him. He didn't try to fight him. Amen. But he aligned, he bowed himself to him and worshiped him uh, and worshiped. Amen. Because, because he aligned himself with God. He, Joshua fell on his face and he worshiped. And that's. Uh, so, so aligning yourself uh, uh, with God. And now, if you are, if you're doing things in your life that is against God, you will not get a victory. You will not get a breakthrough in your life. You will not get victory if you are not aligned with God. You say, "How in the world do I get aligned with God?" You get aligned with God through the Word of God. Amen. How do you hear the Word of God? Is through pastor, through a preacher. Amen. That is how the Word of God is preached. Amen. Is through the man of God. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people out there that say, well, I interpret this as this way. I interpret it that way. Amen. You need, a, you need to be under a pastor that you've got confidence in to help you to interpret the Word of God correctly. 
Amen. There's all sorts of loony stuff out there. Amen. And if you believe everything that you hear on the radio, I've, I've, I don't really listen to a lot of preaching on the radio, but sometimes Sunday mornings they'll come on, and uh, there's, there's some good stuff that's like pretty good stuff taught, and then other times they just kind of go off on the deep end. Amen. You don't, you don't know what they're doing. You don't, don't understand what they're saying. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are just swallowing it up. Amen. Praise God. That's why, that's why God has given us a pastor and a, a leader, amen, to, uh, uh, to help guide us because our ultimate goal is to make it to heaven. And can I say you will not make it to heaven if you don't have victory here? You've got to be victorious. You've got to be victorious over sin. You can't have sin actively in your life and, and expect to make heaven your home. You, you can't have, uh, you know, things that are against God and still be aligned with God in your life. Amen. God is love. If your life is not demonstrating the love of Christ, then you are not aligned with him. And you will not see victory in your life. Amen. We want victory today. Amen. And, and that's what I'm trying to preach to you. I'm kind of treaching a little bit. Amen. Treats to you, uh, amen, tonight about, about I want to see each and every one of you receive a breakthrough from God. I want to see God do something great in your life. Amen. amen. Just about all of you probably heard my pep talk. God's got a plan for your life. He wants to do something great. And some of you, you may look at me and say, John, you say that a lot. I mean it. God has a plan. He's got something, amen, that he wants to do. You are important to him, amen. He didn't just make you and say, oh, I'm, well, I'm not going to use you, you know. But every vessel that he has made, uh, he made it with a purpose and a plan, uh, and he wants to use you, uh, amen. But you've got to align yourself with God. The second thing Joshua did is, after he lined himself with God, is that he fell on his face and he worshipped. You see, worship is the keynote of destiny. What saith my Lord? You see, see, worship creates the atmosphere for hearing God's voice. Worship opens the eyes and the ears of the heart to hear God's voice speak to you. In Acts 13 and 2 it says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Amen. First Samuel 1 talks about Hannah. And they rose up early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come, about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. Amen. You've, you've got to worship. That's got to be part of who you are. Amen. That's got to be part uh, of your response to God. Amen. Worship. Worship. Amen. The next thing that Joshua did was the, the angel of the Lord said, loose thy shoe from off thy foot. <coughs> you see, it was to the shoulders of barefooted priests that God entrusted the ark of his presence. The priests had to remain barefoot while performing the priestly service in the temple, even though much of the service was performed outdoors. Amen. Even in the winter months, they could not wear shoes when serving the needs of the people. Uh, you see, to possess our spiritual inheritance, uh, amen, uh, we must spiritually become spiritually barefooted. And you say, well, John, what are you talking about? I'm not telling anybody to take off your shoes today. You see, a person wearing shoes walks with his feet safely protected and can tread wherever he wishes. He does not need to think about where he's going or what he's stepping on. And when a person walks barefoot, 
Not every surface is accessible to him. He has to think before he takes the next step. He has to anticipate the terrain and navigate accordingly. He cannot walk freely and, and must instead look in front of him and choose carefully where he puts his foot down. Amen. And finally, there are simply places that he cannot go without shoes. You see, this image of caution and discretion and choosing where to walk is a fitting metaphor for our important concept of sanctification. Amen. A life of holiness means a life of careful discretion, of restraint, of thinking very carefully before reaching decisions and performing actions. You see, a person who lives a sacred life is not free to walk wherever he wishes. He must carefully assess every situation and accordingly decide upon the best course of action. Amen. He must realize the implications of the course uh, that he is choosing uh, and the effect that his steps will have uh, on the environment around him. And so the angel of the Lord speaks to Moses uh, and says, Loose thy shoe from off thy feet. Take off your shoes, Moses, uh, because the ground that you're standing on uh, is holy. Amen. In fact, uh, before given any direction from God, uh, Moses had to do, uh, he had to take uh, the shoes off of his feet. Uh, amen. Because where he was treading uh, was holy. Before Joshua can, can move forward as a leader into the promised land, amen, the, the man of the angel said, Take off your shoes, Joshua, because the ground that you are on is holy ground. Amen. I, I don't know if it was simply, uh, amen, that specific spot and location uh, that was holy, uh, or maybe it was who they were ministering to. Uh, amen. Come on. Uh, you can't go treading on everybody. Uh, you can't go walking on everybody uh, and expect them to flourish uh, and grow in God. Amen. You can't walk on your brother and your sister uh, and be aligned with God. Amen. You can't walk any way you want uh, or anywhere you want uh, and say whatever you want to say and do whatever you want to do. Uh, amen. There is a life uh, of separation uh, that God has called us to. Uh, there is a life uh, of separation uh, that God has said, I don't want you going in that direction. Amen. He said, come out from among them uh, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, uh, and I will receive you. And, or in touch not the unclean thing, uh, and I will receive you. Uh, I will be a father unto you, uh, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. I mean, I thought about why is it important that Joshua and Moses both had to take off their shoes. I mean, perhaps it represents no personal agenda, no selfish ambitions, giving up to the plans and purpose and the will of God, walking softly and tenderly. Amen. And it symbolizes an exchanged life. Uh, you know, my plans are for his plans, my will for his will. Amen. That was, that was the interaction between Moses and God. Amen. After Moses submitted to God and removed his shoes, uh, amen, the God begins to tell him, uh, it's not about your will, Moses. Uh, it's about my will. Uh, you've got to give up your own ambitions of being the chief shepherd uh, out here on the backside of the desert. Uh, amen. Because I want you to be a shepherd over my people. Uh, I've got a calling for you. Uh, I've got a purpose for you. Uh, I, I, your plan and your purpose uh, is, is not going to work with me. Uh, you've got to change your will. Uh, you've got to change your plan uh, to go a According to mine. And as I thought about shoes, shoes represent something connected to the flesh that we put on. If you truly want to be a recipient of a breakthrough, then you must put off and put to death the deeds of the flesh. Romans 8 and 13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. 
But if ye live, or if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And let us lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Amen. I feel like God told me that he wants a breakthrough in your life. Uh, but there's got to be some things that you do uh, that put you on the path of a breakthrough. Uh, you can't sit around in church uh, and expect God to just give you a breakthrough. Uh, you've got to push through. Uh, you've got to align yourself with God. Uh, you've got to submit. Uh, you've got to worship. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, I don't know what you've been facing in your life. Uh, but you need to get up uh, and you need to push forward. Amen. You need to push forward. You say, I don't like the resistance. Well, you're not making progress without resistance. Right. Amen. And someone asked me, why, why in the world is the devil, does God allow trouble to come in your life? I said, because it's going to make, help you go forward. It's not meant to knock you back. It's meant to propel you forward. So finally we come to Joshua chapter 6. In 6-2 God tells <coughs> Joshua, now the city is yours. <clears throat> I don't know what walls the difficulty that you may be facing tonight. But I can tell you this, that God is looking for some spiritual barefoot worshipers. <laughs> Amen. Those who have cast off the works of the flesh. Uh, amen. And instead of griping and complaining and grumbling uh, about the problems in your life, uh, take your shoes off and start worshiping him. Uh, amen. Get those things. Uh, amen. That, that are connected to your flesh. Uh, amen. Don't try to suppress it, uh, but cut it off. When one bad report after another reached Job's ears, and from a natural perspective, he had lost everything. Job kept himself connected to his destiny. Job 1, 20 says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. <laughs> he lost everything. His wife turned against him. His friends turned against him. His whole life was falling apart. Uh, he lost it all in a matter of a day uh, or so. Uh, amen. He lost it all, but he rent his clothes uh, and he began to worship. Uh, he said, naked came out, uh, out of my mother's womb uh, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave uh, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The next thing that Joshua teaches us is obedience. Obedience is key to victory. God gave Joshua specific instructions. They were not suggestions. They were his commandments. And their victory was totally reliant upon their obedience to those commands. Work in the word. For six days, the people were forbidden to speak. You know, training ourselves to speak only that which edifies and glorifies God and ministers in faith is truly an accomplishment. Your tongue is one of the most unruly members of your body. And to, and to have this type of spirit, amen, to where you only speak things that edify and glorify God and ministers grace, shows that the inside is truly clean. Because when the inside of your heart is not clean and is not right with God, it won't do that. Colossians 4 and 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Matthew 12 and 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Proverbs 6 and 2, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Hebrews 6 and 12, That ye be not slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 10 and 36, But for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So 
John, what are you preaching to me? I'm preaching how to get a breakthrough in your life. How to get a breakthrough. Don't be talking bad about people. Don't, don't be slandering. You know, slandering sin. It's a sin to slander people. Don't be slandering people. Speak well. Speak good. And if you can't speak anything, then pray for them. If you can't speak good about them, pray for them. And the next thing that Joshua teaches us is that there comes a time to shout. When you know you have lifted your eyes above your problem and you've taken off your shoes and stood barefooted and worshiped God and you've aligned yourself with God and obeyed His voice and you learn how to speak only that which builds up and edifies, all that's left is to shout. Not because everything looks right or sounds right or even feels right, but because God has said that the victory is yours and that this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. Amen. Praise is faith expressing itself audibly. Uh, amen. Faith has a voice. Uh, faith calls those things which be not as though they are. Amen. Those things that be not as though they, uh, they were not. Uh, amen. Uh, faith hears God say it is done before you ever see the finished product. And faith doesn't just say that it is done or shout that it's done, but it believes truly that it's done. You see, faith is the believer's sixth sense. Faith is the believer's ability to see what cannot be seen with the natural eye, to hear what cannot be heard with the natural ear, to taste what cannot be tasted with the natural taste. So, you see, faith is the supernatural sense that is birthed in the human heart when God's word is heard and received and believed and acted upon. Faith enabled Elijah to hear the sound of an abundance of rain when not one drop had fallen in three and a half years. It sustained a widow woman through the famine. Her milk barrel wasted not, and the cruise of oil did not fail until the Lord sent rain according to the word of the, of the Lord by the prophet Elijah. Hebrews 11 and 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became uh, heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 30. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. You see, faith is not a generic mental assent uh, to the truthfulness of the word of God. Amen. That's where, that's where people uh, in Christendom has gone wrong. Uh, amen. They think that as long as they, they mentally assent uh, that they believe that Jesus uh, you know, can, can do what he, whatever he wants to do. Uh, amen. That is not faith. Uh, amen. Anyone can say, I believe uh, in the strength and the ability of the bridge uh, to support the weight of my car and myself. Uh, but faith uh, is when you drive that car across the bridge. Uh, amen. You can say, Oh, I believe it will hold it all you want. Uh, but that's not faith uh, until you put it into action. Mark 16 and 15 and I'm about to come to a close. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Me and, me and Dwayne, we had this conversation the other day in our kitchen. Amen. Or actually in the living room. Dwayne was telling me that he heard someone say that God doesn't always, that God doesn't always just heal. He doesn't always, I mean, don't expect God to just do it. You know, because sometimes God's got it. Sometimes God says, no, that he's not going to work. And I, and I told him, I, said, I told Dwayne, I said, Dwayne, God always works. 
He oftentimes does not work in the way that we want him to or that we wish for him to. But he always answers the prayer. He always, there's always an answer, uh, amen, to the prayer. And he may not respond, uh, you know, like Mary and Martha. They thought, Jesus, you ought to come heal my brother. Uh, And Jesus said, no, I want to come raise him from the dead. I've got to come a little late so that in your book, in your eyes, so that I can raise him from the dead. I don't want to just do a healing, uh, but I want there to be a resurrection. uh, Amen. And he even said, uh, I, I I want to resurrect him so that you will believe. You will have faith. You know, if God's word is true, and we know it is. The question was said the other day at our last Sunday. But how they want to see, people want to see the power of God be manifested in our lives. I believe the answer is in understanding what Jesus meant when he said believe. We have raised a generation of mental assenters. Ones that agree with the with the mind to the truth of the word, but from Jesus' perspective, uh, believers are more agreeers uh, uh, than doers. Amen. But Jesus is wanting us to be doers of the word and not just agreeers. Amen. That's, that's how they view, uh, amen, what Jesus is telling them to do. is just uh, mentally assent uh, and, and just say that they believe and that they agree uh, rather than to do. James 2.19 tells us uh, that devils believe and tremble. Uh, amen. But they don't do any righteous works of faith. Uh, amen. The plague that has infested the church world today uh, is that of calling the agreement of the mind a vital and living faith and calling it believing while it is not amen according to the scripture faith has corresponding works that accompany it and without works it is dead that means that a believer has got to be a doer if they do not do the word then all they are is an agreeer or a hearer they, are, they agree that it's right, but they never put it into action in their life. Amen. To agree that tithing is a biblical principle that transcends both the Old and New Covenant uh, does not make you a believer. It just makes you an agreeer. You can agree and not be a doer. But the minute that you act on what you agree with it, you become a biblical believer. Amen. God's not calling people to just come and agree with them. Amen. He said, I want you to invest. I want you to invest into the kingdom. I want you to believe. And when you believe, you're going to have some works. You're going to have some things that you're going to do. I don't want you to just believe that that I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Or just have a agree that the Holy Ghost is for everybody. Amen. I want you to receive it. I want your faith to be activated to where you receive the Holy Ghost. The same with praying. To agree to a great need of prayer in your life does not make you a praying person. A lot of people in the church, they believe that. That as long as they just, we're on the same boat. I agree that you need prayer, but they never pray. It doesn't make them a praying person. To agree with Jesus' words, the kind that this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting, does not give you power over demons. To agree to liberty of the Spirit, to worship the Lord by praising and clapping the hands and shouting and dancing, does not make you a liberated worshiper. To agree to Jesus' words concerning self-denial and taking up the cross uh, brings us no closer to resurrection power because we must be doers. If you never deny yourself and take up your cross, then it has done you no good. Just to be, John, what are you preaching tonight? I'm preaching about getting victory. Amen. I'm preaching about overcoming, breaking through. Amen. And the only way that you're going to break through is by being a doer and and activating your faith uh, and and, and becoming a doer of the word of God. 
Believers are doers, and doers are seers. The reason we haven't seen more power in the glory of God in our lives is because we have mistakenly accepted a mental assent or agreement of the mind for Bible believing. Many people will say they believe the Bible, but if they do not live according to its principles, they don't believe, they just agree. You say, well, well, this believer doesn't, doesn't do that. This believer doesn't follow. You know, they do their own thing. Well, they're not a believer. The only way that you can be a believer is if you, if, if you activate it in your life and you live according to its principles. When we believe, we will do. When we do or become doers of what we are agreeing with, we will see the power of God. At the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus said, take away the stone. John eleven forty, 40, Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. What was between believing and the seeing? What was between it? There was something between believing and the seeing. There was the doing. He said, remove the stone. Before they ever saw Lazarus get up from the grave, they had to activate their faith. And they had to remove the... They said, Lord, he stinks. Just move, remove the stone. Just do it because there's a miracle coming your way. Amen. I've, I've been praying and praying and praying for Rosalinda. There's been several in the church. That I've been praying, praying for. That I, that have got severe health issues. Problems, uh, like on death's bed. Not that far. Amen, if God doesn't intervene. Praying, praying, God, I want to see them healed. God, heal their bodies. Raise them up. Give, Lord, give us a miracle. Amen, give us a breakthrough. Amen. God, what is what needs to be done so that we can have a breakthrough? Amen. We've got to deny ourselves. We've got to cut off the flesh. You can't be living after the flesh uh, and expect God to move on your behalf. Amen. We can talk about prayer, sing about prayer, write songs about prayer, preach about prayer, teach about prayer. But we will not experience the benefits and the power of prayer until you pray. The same is with fasting. The same is with liberated worship. James said it is not the forgetful hearer who hears and agrees with the word, but does nothing with it who is blessed. But the doer is the one that is blessed. And if you want a breakthrough, and I am coming to a close. If you want to break through into a new dimension of spiritual power and authority in your life, just determine that from now on, no matter what it looks like or feels like, you're going to be a doer of the word. For when we believe, we will do. And when we do, we will see the tremendous breakthrough in our lives. See, Daniel didn't just believe that his answer was on its way. He didn't just mentally agree. That, oh, God's going to send the answer. But for three weeks, he prayed and he fasted for three weeks until his answer arrived. Until the breakthrough comes, you need to stay faithful. You need to pray. You need to fast. You need to keep doing Until the healing is revealed, you need to keep praying. You need to keep fasting. You need to keep talking to God about it. You need to say, well, why do I have to talk to Mother? You keep talking to God about it. You keep praying. You keep seeking God until deliverance is wrought. You, you keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep persevering. Keep contending. And Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we fail. Until the breakthrough comes, you've got to keep going. But it's pointless to keep spinning your wheels. 
if you don't have everything else lined up. If you're doing your own thing, if you're doing your own thing, making your own decisions, not listening to God, not listening to the voice of God in your life, don't expect a breakthrough. But when you align yourself with God and you worship God and you say, God, I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to like walk on people. I don't want to talk bad about them. God, I want to live for you and I want to walk with you and I need a victory in my life. You know, the scripture says that when you come to the altar to pray, that if you know that your brother has ought against you. It doesn't say keep praying. You know why? Because you'll just be spinning your wheels. If you're not going to do what, what he said to do, then you're just wasting your time. But he said, leave your gift at the altar. And you go to that person and you make it right. And when you make it right, then you come back and you offer up the gift to God, and God will receive it. You know what he said? You'll get a breakthrough in your life. How are we going to get a breakthrough? We need to live for God. We need to cut the flesh out. Get rid of it. You say, well, I've always got flesh. You need to die out to that carnality. Die out to the desires. You die out through fasting and prayer and reading the word of God. You say, well, my flesh don't like it. Well, that's the whole point. <laughs> I'm going to, I know I've, I've asked several of you, or if I, I've asked all of you, take a day a week. Don't tell anybody what day you're taking. Take a day a week and fast and pray. Seek the face of God. Do it through January. And you know what? Keep it up all year long. It's a great practice to get into. Fasting is one of the hardest things for me to do. <laughs> As you can tell, I, I'm being honest. It's hard. Because I, I have my routine. <laughs> I don't eat breakfast. And then I go up at 10 o'clock. Most of the time I go at 10 o'clock, get me a taco. <laughs> and when I break that routine, by noon, <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> and when I know that, that relief isn't coming anytime soon, <laughs> it makes for a miserable day. And so I just got to pray and ask God to help me. And as much as I, I don't like fasting, I know that it helps me. And it's good. It's good for me. And it's good for you. Amen. Because God doesn't want you struggling with the same things that you struggled with last year. He doesn't. He wants you to have victory. He wants you to have a breakthrough. And if you'll follow some of these steps, if you'll follow the steps that I told you tonight, amen, submitting yourself to God, that's really what all that was about. Was submit. I could have just said submitting yourself to God. But I don't know if you had really understood what it meant to submit yourself to God. It's all about submitting yourself to God. And allowing God to move in your life. And he will give you a breakthrough. Be faithful. Don't give up. Don't give up. I told, I told a lady the other day. I was, went to go pray for her. And she told me, she said, have they found a spot on my brain? Not sure if it's cancer or what it is. She said, you know, I just feel like giving up. And I told her, I said, don't give up. Don't give up. God is working. We are praying. We are fasting. God is working. Don't give up. Hang on to God. Galatians 6 and 9. 6 9 said, and be not weary in well doing. Don't get tired of doing the right thing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. 
if you don't give up, you're going to lose. Amen? Let's stand.